Well, this is a large city. Uh, 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 50,000 or so people live here. Uh, the River Merz is behind me, which is the river that caused all of that trouble. I'll let you have a look at it. You can see the kind of mess behind me. This road and bridge closed. It was this river that rose some 10 meters or so uh, from the level you see here just two or three days ago and uh, caused absolute chaos as it pushed through these streets, turning the streets themselves into rivers. So I'll give you a little snapshot of just one street. There is nothing to do in this town right now but clean up. Here you have a family pulling belongings out of their homes. Uh, it's muddy, it's hot now, obviously it's summer, and um, it's hard work. There's a bit of a sense of humour still, but uh, you can see that that's really very difficult. Um, there's an, even a lady here who's had to pull her animal out of a home and look after it. You can have a look, Lex, and here there's a, there's a cat inside this, uh, this basket struggling a little bit with the heat. Very difficult for animals to, um, to uh, get themselves situated in, in, in places like this. So we've seen dogs and cats uh, struggling a little bit as homeowners try and sort out uh, their, their own homes. Um, just a little look at this street area here. This is why infrastructure has been such an issue uh, and why thoughts have turned really to how fragile our modern lives are in the face of such powerful water in particular. It's the, this is the cabling of the, of, the, of the town underneath the pavement. Internet connection uh, and so on. Uh, there is no power, there is no water, uh, there's no cabled internet. Uh, in some cases there's no fresh water. Um, people are struggling to get access uh, to food, it's being delivered, of course, by lots of volunteers who are turning up. In natural disasters, you often see the best of people. And there's, it's difficult to access food because we've been into businesses and supermarkets, you know, nearby food supplies that have been completely devastated. Uh, we met one owner of a supermarket who said it was his life's work, his life savings, and it's finished. You just can't see a way, even with insurance payouts, for it uh, to, be, um, to be rescued. And we'll just continue to walk down this street. If you bear with me, I think our signal is still holding up. And you can see just the piles and piles of stuff. These, these sofas and people's desks and children's books. We've got a microwave there. And you can see inside this home here, people trying to, uh, to sort out their home. It's just been devastating. Meters and meters of water and now the cleanup. So. OK, Hannah, thank you so much. further down. I'm sorry, Kimberly. we're struggling a little bit with the, with the signal, but you've just got a snapshot here of just one street in one town and how difficult it has been for these people uh, to respond to this devastating event. And of course, they're worried about when it will happen or what will happen when the waters come again another time.